hey, Ed. How are you? What's wrong? You're no good to me, Dad. Oh, I'm not dead. I'm just encasing carbonite. Well, that's perfect. Because we're talking about the Mandalorian. <laughs> Hi, this is Ed Dollister. And this is Mitch Halleck. And welcome to another episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. Before we begin this week, a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the show. Remember, if you are, you know what's an interesting fact, Mitch? What's that, Ed? Over 70% of our viewers haven't subscribed to our show. What? I know. What are you people doing out there? You're never going to know when we're doing a new show unless you subscribe. So hit the subscribe button and more important, hit the notification button so you don't have to keep watching this all day for a new Mitch and Ed excellent adventure. We'll let you know when it happens. That's right. That's right. But thank you to all our new subscribers. We've had quite a few. And who would have thunk it? Our um, last special land of the lost has been our most popular special so far it's amazing that's a lot of slee stack man who knew chaka 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 has got a big uh he's got a big fan group out there so um he's still anyway, got it he's still right. got it he sure does and if you um also uh like the show don't forget to comment and um we've had some really fantastic in-depth comments and uh, we really appreciate all yeah. the um, effort that goes into those and that you're really enjoying the show. So that's yeah, especially the uh, Halloween episode we did. There was a lot of good information about some of the TV specials that we talked about and some yep. that we didn't talk about. So maybe we'll go back and revisit that because there's a lot, a lot of material that we've yet to cover. So there sure thanks is for the input. Yeah. Well, but we're, anyway, we're what talking, are we talking today? about today. We're talking about, um, I, I, I sort of, it is, um, I've sort of dressed up a little bit. I've gone a little bit like the flannel one. And while mm -hmm. this is my indie fedora, thanks to Penman Hats, it's actually, I'm sort of trying to channel Dave Filoni a little bit because oh. we are talking about the Mandalorian. Oh, I just happen to be wearing the original Mandalorian that we all know, Boba Fett. That's so, right. Yeah. And of course, oh. uh, season two just uh, dropped. Uh, well, as of recording, for me, it was yesterday, but for you, it's... For me, it was uh, 3 o'clock this morning, and I was watching it at 3.05 this morning. So, wow. yeah, I can wait. I'm so dedicated. So, we'll talk a little bit about um, Season 2 and Episode 1 of Season 2. Um, we might have a... Maybe a few... We might put a spoiler alert um, mm. if you haven't watched it, but um, odds are you probably have. But nah, we, but we just... Yeah. I was going to say, why don't we just go back to when we first started hearing about mandalorians and boba fett way before the disney plus show i mean we're talking oh over 40 years ago now right oh my gosh absolutely in fact i remember first seeing um and i didn't realize he was a mandalorian i just thought he mm. was a bounty hunter at this stage and i would actually say it probably was um i think it probably was the star wars holiday special but it certainly was either that or in tandem with the release of this yeah um, you got it where you could um find out about a new boba fett action figure from the new film empire strikes back and i'm thinking oh my gosh that's that's where oh. i first heard of uh boba fett how about you oh uh, the same thing here and i started hearing inklings of like a new character coming out for this new empire strikes back because again sequels were a brand new territory for a lot of us most of them were never good back in the 70s. They were always inferior copies of the original one. But this was going to be something special. And Joe Johnston, under George Lucas's orders, were to create something called like a super commando. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a variation of the stormtrooper that was already established by Ralph McQuarrie uh, early on. And you might see even some toys of that one where there's a shield and they had a lightsaber. But yeah. this was going to be a different type of character. This was going to be... Uh, like a commando, like, uh, you know, an elite force. And these guys, from what Lucas was thinking about, was the Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. These are people that were fought in the Clone Wars that were mentioned by Obi-Wan Kenobi in the first movie. But we didn't know even 
know what the Clone Wars were. Our imagination was coming up with stuff. So they sent Joe Johnston out there, who's a fantastic artist, and say, come up with some conceptual stuff. So what you see behind me here, and in some of the action figures that they've come out with too, they started tinkering around with that. And they came up with the, the helmet that's kind of like the T face mask and then the rocket pack too. And so much so that they even had Joe Johnston make a costume of it to show yes, George yes. what it would look like. And there's video of this. I think it's on one of the documentary uh, specials on some of the old DVDs where they dressed him up in this white outfit. They gave him the beach towel. That's the legendary Star Wars beach towel as a cape. It, it's, it's, it's not even a real cape. It's, it's just somebody grabbed it. And if you look really good on the, uh, the details, you can see it's a Star Wars beach towel. They even came up with a little, you can see it in the picture there, there's a little smoke coming out of his jetpack. Mm -hmm. So when they brought it over to George, they wanted to show him how it would work. And he's like, oh, this is great. And like you said, the only thing that the fans got to see was there's going to be a toy coming out. And if you mail away, you're going to get this special figure. And we didn't know what Boba Fett was. I mean, uh, we all knew he was going to be some type of bad guy, but we didn't know exactly what he was going to be. Was it going to be one of a, a, an army of guys? Was going to be a solo guy? But like you said, it wasn't until the famous... There it is. Yes. The holiday special. The only good thing that people can agree upon was the cartoon was good. That was um, created by Nelvana. Nelvana later on, you'd probably know as um, Inspector Gadget. They did yep. the Care Bears as well. And of course they did later on the Droids and Ewoks um, animated series. But this was a really um, sort of a gritty looking, very stylized sort of um, look at look into the Star Wars universe. Basically, um, uh, Luke and um, R2 and 3PO had to go find um, Han and Chewie who were looking for a certain um, MacGuffin basically. And yeah. uh, Boba Fett comes in. Boba Fett seems to be a friendly person at this stage, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting. Um, of course, they find out he's working for the Empire. And uh, I know that Nelvana, they did study um, a lot of the spaghetti westerns, which was interesting yeah. for the look and the grittiness of it, which obviously has followed through to uh, The Mandalorian today. And yeah, you're right. absolutely right. It's probably about a nine minute cartoon. You can find it on YouTube uh, in its entirety if you want to watch it. What is it, Mr. Luke? I'm not sure. You saved my life. Thank you. You are alone. I have two droids. We've come in search of a ship that crashed near here. Maybe I can help you. I am Boba Fett. The ship you seek is nearby. Are the Imperial troops near this planet? They are here, friend, and growing more powerful. What? How far away? Settle down. <laughs> all they do is eat. This is all we have, but uh, he's welcome to it. You are foolish to waste your kindness on this dumb creature. No lower life form is worth going hungry for, friend. I take it you have no love of the Empire. Yeah, it was great. You got to see his signature look, um, mm -hmm. his fantastic, interesting uh, double-pronged rifle, mm -hmm. and um, his rocket pack. He was um, he was a really exciting, mysterious character of, of few words. Yeah, and like you said, the, everything you could imagine a little boy would want for a toy was in that design it had a flamethrower in the wrist it had the rocket missile in the backpack there and like you said the double prong gun we didn't know what that was he also had wookie braids i mean the the costume told so many stories without telling you anything about the character how could you not just fall in love with this guy it's like what's his backstory i want to know more about this guy here i mean lord knows the star wars universe was already full of a thousand aliens that you want to know more of but yes. this one character who says more in the cartoon than he will in the Empire Strikes Back. It just immediately caught on with the, the, the fans and everybody just wants to know more about him. And like you said, it wasn't until the Empire Strikes Back came out that we really got to see Boba Fett, even though we didn't hear much about him. But the comic book came out just when the movie did, uh, the Marvel comic came out. And I remember behind me here, the drawing of Boba Fett on the front cover it just captured my imagination because, you know, he didn't have a VHS or a DVD to go home and study. So I would just sit there and look at that costume and go, Ooh, what's that? What's that? Where do you get this from? Where do you get that from too? So, I mean, 
he was fantastic. And did you notice that his voice? I mean, many people now won't recognize this because they've dubbed his voice with Tamara Morrison. But back in the day, he was done by an actor named Gabriel Dell, who was part of a group here called the Dead End Kids or the East Side Kids. It was a, a 40s or 50s uh, black and white comedy group they were. Mm-hmm. And they were like an Abbott Costello type thing. And Gabriel Dell was one of the actors there, but he went on to become a broadcaster and a voiceover artist. He's the original voice of Boba Fett for The Empire Strikes Back. But now he's he's like Clive Revel. He's lost to time. You don't see yes. him anymore. And uh, Sebastian Shaw, they're gone. They've been erased from Star Wars canon. But yeah. the original voice was a guy named Gabriel Dell. So, ah, yeah, I do miss... Um... I don't mind Tamura Morrison um, added into um, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Um, and I suppose it does give, uh, you know, continuity, I suppose, to the character. But mm-hmm. um, as someone, you know, of our age, you know, who remember, it's hard, it's hard to get those original voices and oh, original yeah. scenes out. But yeah, I, I agree with the, um, the figure originally, of course, we've spoken about it. Check out yeah. our collecting episode um, was the rock, the rocket firing uh, Boba Fett. Um, um originally and um obviously that super commando sort of changed a little bit to when we saw um him in uh the empire strikes back but of course he did retain a lot of the weapons you were saying the the um the rocket which i love seeing um yeah. he also had you know the flamethrower the um the wrist um gauntlets that shot out yeah. the um the the uh the rope um, which was really cool. And I liked, as you can see on the, on the helmet here, you know, what I liked is like a Star Wars, a used universe is the, mm-hmm. um, you know, the dents and thinking what battle did he get that in or what scrape did he get that? Or how did he get those Wookiee braids? You know, what happened and all that sort of stuff. I was going to say, I had a keychain uh, somewhere around this house that had voice uh, dialogue from the original movie. And it has that actor's voice on it. So when you press the button you'd hear the five lines like he's no good to me dead yes uh you know put him in put captain soul in the cargo hold all that stuff but that's the original actor you have the 12 inch boba fett action figure toy yep. it doesn't speak or anything there's no sound effects in that is there no it it doesn't all it's got is the it's got quite a cool let me grab it actually all right no, because I remember that was a big deal when that toy came out, all the different features it had, but a sound chip was not one to be had in that thing. No, so he's um he's pretty cool. So he's got his visor that comes down. Yeah. He's got his Steve Austin um where you can look through the back. Yeah. You can see um maybe there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This um, is, yeah, this he's got finder. his um he's got his uh Wookiee pelts. Yep right here um his uh blaster his um rocket um you know his Gauntlet wrist things, rocket yeah. um he's got his uh basically the rocket that comes out at the end and it ties ties up here does that shoot out is there like a it doesn't loader? um it doesn't shoot out but it um you can use it as sort of like a grappling hook so um yeah so if i, so I was that- so, so thrilled to finally get uh a complete you know to complete my uh version of him because um He's a great action figure, actually. So, yeah. I, well, again, so, so everybody wants to know more and more about Boba Fett. And the only time you got to find out more, and the, for the first time, for anybody at home that's actually counting and go, well, what about the Mandalorian? What, what about that? Well, that doesn't happen right away because Marvel Comics, to their credit, Dave Michelini was the writer, are the first people to coin the phrase Mandalore. Mm-hmm. that is not a george lucas thing that's not a joe johnson thing it was the marvel comics issue 68 of the star wars comic and it's about a group of mandalorians if you will and it's uh, led by a guy named fen f-e-n-n shisa yes and he was friends with boba fett and princess leia comes across uh fen and two other mandalorians and they tell the story about how they were born on the planet Mandalore and they fought for the empire and the, the uh, emperor had put out a bounty on princess Leia I, somewhere. I got the, the, the shot of it here and you can see in the distance there, there's a picture of the emperor and he's got a picture of princess Leia. So he hires these bounty hunters to go after her. And then there's a whole scuttle between Boba Fett and Finn Shisa, and they fight about who's to collect what, but that's to, 
to the the canon that's out there that everybody wants to know about even dave filoni talked about this once in a behind the scenes video where was the first time you heard the term mandalorian and that's where it comes from it comes from that marvel comic so you, you know not all the things that they came up with are canon anymore but this little snippet actually stuck and that's yes. the whole basis of what we're going to be talking about after on it's about a group of warrior type uh aliens i'm gonna say kind of like a spartan type yep. of thing they're hunters you know they don't always do things for money they do things for honor and they have a code about them too and they're just not scum and villainy they just don't kill people or hunt people down for a quick buck yep. it's, it's very regimented and they yeah, have they're a not like the pre- they're not like the predator that uh, no, no, just no, does no, it no. for sport so as as we find out, it's a creed. It's a it's um. It's a creed. It's a belief. Yeah. Yeah. It's a way of life. What, what do they say on the show? That, that's the way it is. <laughs> that's it. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Bruce Hornsby and the Range. It, <laughs> it's actually, that would be good. Bruce Hornsby and the Range Finder. I like no, it. No, no, no. Hey, well, there you go. What I'm just saying that there, there's a they're, they're kind of like the Klingons. If you watch Star Trek, you got Klingons. You got this whole society based on honor and all that. Kind of like the Mandalorians, except they're damn cooler with all yeah. their gadgets and such, too. Absolutely. So and there's a, a, you know, you alluded to the um, legends. I do remember, Re, I, I've got every, all, was it 110 issues of the uh, Marvel Star Wars comics? Yeah, 108 issues. And then 108. Got so um, I've got yeah. all of those. And I remember, I remember those stories and they were really oh, yeah. fantastic. Unfortunately, yeah, as you said, you know, not canon, but they do. You will find bits and they do cherry pick ideas. Oh, yeah, that. absolutely. There was well, the that's whole, the thing. I was just Go going ahead. to say the whole story with um uh, with Karen Travis, who wrote um a series of um 501st novels and went into all the history and lore of Mandalore and, um you know, their belief system. And there was the um the Jedi, um uh, the Man- Mandalorian Jedi battle and purge yeah, it wasn't yeah. called the purge really no. all that is um has been erased into uh into well, uh, the ether but i was gonna say dark horse comics after marvel comics lost the license in the mid 80s dark horse picked it up and now dark horse right after the shadows of the empire uh the heir to the empire trilogy comes out there's a whole new resurgence in star wars fandom this is like 1990 1991 everybody's coming back on board because it's been years since we saw Boba Fett get wiped out unceremoniously into the Sarlacc pit. Yes. And pretty much everybody thought it was over, but suddenly we have a whole new series of novels that start to come out. People want to know more about the character because he was such a fan favorite and to George, w- George Lucas's bewilderment. He's always said he never understood what the fascination was with Boba Fett because to him, it was just a throwaway character Mm -hmm. like Greedo was in the bar in Star Wars. He was never meant to be more than a bounty hunter hired by Darth Vader to get Han Solo. But the fan community created such a love for Boba Fett. They wanted to know more. They wouldn't let him die. And there was a book called Jabba's Palace, Mm -hmm. Tales from Jabba's Palace, where it explained how Boba Fett did not die in the Sarlacc's maw in the mouth he didn't die in there and suffer for a thousand years as he was slowly digested he escapes and there's a comic book about it and they talk about how dengar helped him survive doesn't he um lose his his memory does he lose he loses his memory because he was trapped he was slowly being digested over a thousand years so it was messing with his mind but his his uniform or his, his costume his armor saves him from being devoured by the sarlacc because mm-hmm. it's got we don't know at the time the, the well, proper it's that, Bes- name. it's that beskar um metal yeah, that's the armor uh, yeah but it was i don't think they even called it then because again no. this is all evolving as we go along so they didn't get into that but he does survive in fact he shows up in the sequel dark empire where han solo goes to now shada and he meets the huts and all that stuff and there's boba fett and Boba Fett and Han Solo just pick up where they left off and start fighting with each other. And it's almost like a Roadrunner, uh, Wiley Coyote situation yeah. because Boba Fett shows up, Han Solo kills him, boom, blows up, shows up again. He's all dirty and, you know, I'm still after you, Solo. And then they go at it again. It's like a never ending chase between these two people, you know? Yeah. So again, all these stories that were so well done, I mean, there was one Boba Fett book after another Boba Fett yeah. book, one that he fought Darth Vader 
it was phenomenal but you could still go and read them they're categorized as legends mm -hmm. so the books are still in print and they've been reprinted in collected editions but basically what they mean by legends is it's not part of the core star wars official canon i mean yes. you don't need to read all these books like we did because they don't matter yeah they just what basically what happened in the films what happens in the clone wars cartoon and then rebels and all the other animated ones the official disney lucasfilm productions those are the true history yes. of the Mandalorians and all the Star Wars characters. And it's kind of sad because like you just mentioned, there's such a rich history mm. where they trace back how for thousands of generations, the Jedi and the Mandalorians were allies at one point and then they turned against each other. And then there's a battle with a character called Ulic Queldroma. And then there's Darth Malak. All yeah. these stories that we read about, video games, comic books, audio dramas novels it just got washed away yeah so yep. there's a it's a very hard to watch a lot of the current star wars stuff because we were brainwashed for 20 years with all these expanded universe stories that kind of stuck in our head so when we go to watch the rise of skywalker or the last jedi go hey wait a minute that's mm. contradictory to what we learned about the jedi knights before or this is not what yep. i learned about the mandalorian so you really have to put all that stuff away and just concentrate on, like I said, the animated show and the Clone Wars and all that to truly enjoy this stuff because you'll sit there and nitpick all these little details that just don't matter anymore. I know. I think Star Wars needs like DC, a multiverse where you know, ah, oh, there's another universe much, where yeah. you can have, um, you know, a uh, different Flash, Ezra Miller, or you can have Grant Gustin as the, they all exist in the same universe. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. so that would that would help. Uh, however, they did, I was going to say they did do a series called Star Wars Infinites, where it was kind of a what if or an Elseworld right. story where they said, what if Princess Leia joined up with Darth Vader or what if Darth Vader turned to the good side and didn't yes. die? So there's a whole bunch of those stories. Again, very well done, illustrated, fantastic. But they're just stories. Don't sit there and expect them to be on the big screen or referred to because they don't matter but if you want a good read by all means go out there and read the star wars legend series but go ahead what were you well, i was gonna say well after we saw um boba fett unceremoniously um shot into uh the sarlacc and you know in sort of a blink and you'll miss it almost moment um mm -hmm. we it took a long time to see uh boba fett back on film and uh when we did see him it was uh probably not exactly how we expected to see him back in 2002. So yeah. we saw him as a kid, Boba Fett as a kid um, to uh, the father, Tamura Morrison playing Jango Fett, but it was still great to see um, uh, a Mandalorian up on, up on the big screen fighting as we'd never really seen um, Boba Fett f uh, fly in a movie or fight in a movie before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got to see Jango Fett in action and literally in action because he fights obi-wan kenobi on kamino yeah in the rainstorm that's a terrific battle sequence yep. between the two of them and but they showed everything in Django fett's armor in that movie i mean my god he had the the, the wrist gauntlets this that the flamethrowers little little like uh i don't know what you want to call them, metal hooks that came out that made yeah, him so he could like the like on the gauntlets yeah, yeah. like batman yeah, yeah 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 like batman too but Django fett was a cool badass character and of course he's the template that they use for the clone troopers who then become the stormtroopers but we still don't know anything about the mandalorians too much it's not until we get into the animated series mm -hmm. of the, the clone wars cartoon where we really start to find out more about the history of mandalore and this is the stuff that's going to tie into the new disney plus tv series the mandalorian mm -hmm. and this is dave filoni when he comes up to bat i mean he's yeah. handpicked by lucas to do the Clone Wars show, which was initially going to just be the secret stories of Obi-Wan and Anakin and his new Padawan, Ahsoka Tano, that we never heard about. But there was whole seasons devoted to uh, Sabine, I think that was Obi-Wan Kenobi's girlfriend, who was oh, the yeah. leader. Sat uh, Satine? Satine, Satine, yes. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it, just, it just went on and on and on. I mean, it's really like a soap opera. There's, I, I'm going to say more than a dozen episodes or more of the whole internal conflict you got the death watch 
Yes. And then you got uh, Pre Vizsla. I can't. Pre Vizsla, who who's voiced by John Favreau, who John who's eventually going to come and create the Mandalorian. So it's really interesting to start looking at this backstory. You wonder where the seeds of the Mandalorian TV show really start because yes, is it Favreau who's just a voice actor working with Filoni and they just start talking to each other or George starts planting the seeds to a Mandalorian TV show or I don't know. Isn't there a video game that was in the works at that point? There was a, oh, now there was, it was called 1313, I think was um the, um, uh, it was the seedy side of Coruscant. Yeah, like it was. Under, it was underworld. like yeah, the below below the levels, and it was going to be something like that as well. So I think there was all those things. There was that. Um, you also had um a lot of um, yeah, there was a lot of story about the Mandalorians, and you had Bo Katan, um, that Katie Sackov voiced, um, mm -hmm. as well. You find out about the dark saber. Um, Darth Maul tries to take. You've got the um Mandalorian commandos and um. Oh yeah, a whole, it, the in the certainly in the later seasons, and the good thing is they're all on Disney Plus. Um, mm -hmm. And to be honest, you don't need to um, like with Star. You know, I sometimes I like going to a movie, and I don't like having to go. That's what, one of the problems I have with the Marvel movies is you go, oh my god, I've got to have seen every single thing. You know, sometimes you know to happening. get all those yeah. things, but you don't really need to, um, you know, know that to watch. Certainly. Um, um, Mandalorian season one or season two, you can just um, go in um, and um, enjoy it. But it's a little bit richer and deeper if you do go and oh, watch yeah. those episodes. Oh, of, yeah. Um, uh, there's also a, of Rebels as well, where you've got is it Sabine? Sabine. Oh, Sabine. Yeah, I think, Sabine. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Who's, well, um, I was going to say, Darth Maul, you just mentioned him really quickly. Again, that's a whole other subject we didn't even talk about when it comes to Mandalorian because the Dark Saber. For those folks who don't know what it is, it does show up in season one of The Mandalorian. People are like, yeah, what is that very, black yeah, lightsaber? Yeah. That, if I can find it right over here, yeah. it's not the real thing. I would have cut my fingers off if it was. But this weapon was created by The Mandalorians, and it was designed to fight a Jedi Knight's lightsaber. Mm -hmm. And the person who wielded this was the leader of The Mandalorian. So there was only one of these. And if you had it, you were by default the leader of the Mandalorian. Darth Maul takes this saber, if you will, the black saber, the dark saber, and he becomes the leader of the Mandalorians on the animated series. So I don't know if they're going to talk about that because they have incorporated Darth Maul into the Star well, Wars sequels. He was yeah, the baddie in, in, in the end of Solo. And now that we see the dark saber show up in the Mandalorian by Moff Gideon, he's walks out of the uh, Tie Fighter at the end of uh, episode eight, I think it is, eight, on yes. season one, yeah. and he's he's holding that above his head. That now ties the animated series into the show. It tars, it's it blew my mind at first. I was like, oh my god, now they're bringing Darth Maul into it, and he had his brother Savage Opress. You say you might not want to read all that extra expanded universe stuff but it does make it a very richer story to know there's all these layers to it because i know my son he loves the mandalorian but he doesn't know all the clone war stuff he knows some of it but he didn't watch the later seasons but he's like what's that lightsaber thing dad and then i start telling him about it again you could appreciate the mandalorian tv show without knowing every little minutiae you know detail to the whole yeah. thing well that's what i like it do like about it and we'll talk about it obviously as we get into it but um i do like that you don't necessarily need to know it to watch it but after mm -hmm. after watching it that's when you go oh i'm gonna google that or what's this about yeah. or you know that and that's what i that's what i do like well originally so before the disney acquisition and everything like that they were working on um a um uh a star wars tv show so mm -hmm. And it was called um, Underworld. And they had hired writers and they had written um, around, I think around 50 episodes. Yeah, it was scripted. all, they, yeah, they were all scripted and ready to go. Wasn't there a, a writer's strike or something that kind of put that on hold or something? Well, happened? I think there was that. And also they, they deemed it that it was too expensive to um, produce. That's so right. He was looking time. for a, a network because he said it was like Deadwood, which was a Western on, HBO, that was the whole yes. plan for this show. Yeah, 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 I remember that now. And um, so, and then of course, you know, there was the Disney acquisition and everything like that. And then 
then we found out, okay, there's going to be a, a Boba Fett. I think it was originally like we heard it was a Boba Fett TV show um, originally. And that uh, morphed into the, um, the show that it is Mandalorian. So again, we spoke about John Favreau, who's really mm-hmm. the creator. And um, we have um, some fantastic writers, Dave Filoni, of course, you mentioned who was, um, you know, pivotal in um, uh, rebels and clone wars and resistance. So he's, steeped in um star wars law a fan favorite and he knows his stuff you know he's got a great eye as well um and um this time last year um it was the launch i suppose title for disney plus disney's new mm-hmm. streaming service the mandalorian and it went gangbusters oh yeah from the opening scene it, it everything that i imagined a Star Wars movie, live action, TV series, everything was in the opening episode. And this is what really differentiates, and I'm not going to bash the Star Wars new sequels that just came out, but yep. as somebody who grew up with this stuff in the 70s and saw Star Wars on the big screen when I was 11 years old, and I'm in my 50s now, and I do th- believe Favreau's got to be around my age. I think he's in his early 50s as well. Yep he's a nerd about this stuff. And so is Filoni and all that. We grew up, we're fanboying out on this stuff. We know all those details because we read all those expanded universes and we know where uh, Finn Scheisse came from and we know about Mandalore. We know about all these things, but we're like, when is that ever going to happen? So what you have is a TV show that you said earlier, mines and cherry picks all the good stuff from all those expanded universe stories. It's like, hey, that dark saber thing was a good idea. And hey, wasn't this cool? And remember that alien you saw in the background in the cantina and you always wanted to see more? And wasn't IG-88 one of the coolest bounty hunters there was because he was like a battle droid, yep. assassin droid type thing? All these stories you want to know more about that you would tell your own stories in your own head were on the screen mm-hmm. in 55 minutes or so, whatever the first episode was. And literally, if they never did... The Rise of Skywalker and The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens, and they just did this, I I would die a happy person because I literally watch it and think this is Star Wars. This to me is all the adventures I always imagined as a kid. Yes. On every week. Well, for eight or 10 weeks or whatever it comes out to be, but still, it's phenomenal. The, the design. They got Doug Chang back, and Doug yes. Chang was the uh, art from director. Episode for one, yep. For episode one, brilliant artist. This is like Joe Johnston was in his day. Chang is the other guy that comes up with all the great designs, and it's so great because there was so much information that he created for the prequels that they never really got to use because they had a finite amount of, you know, screen time. He's using some of his old designs, and they're back again. I'm like, that's really awesome, you know. So it, it's it's a great show, but. There are some things on The Mandalorian, and we can talk now about the show because we're at that point, yeah. that kind of drives me a little crazy because it contradicts a little bit. And I don't want to be the nitpicking fanboy stuff, but they can't take their mask off. That is something I don't know where that started because we know in The Clone Wars and Jango Fett, they're taking their mask off all the time. So I don't know where this, like, I can't take my mask off and no living creature can see me, you know? Well, I uh, I understand that. We've got, obviously, the Mandalorians played brilliantly by um, Pedro Pascal, um, who you'll see, um, mm-hmm. you probably know from, you know, maybe Kingsman and from uh, Narcos and also oh, uh, Wonder Game Woman 84 Thrones, when it really comes yeah. out. Um, he, he reminds me of Burt Reynolds. He's got that yeah. Burt Reynolds... Um, persona but he's um he's great he's able to emote it's a mate i mean it's a sign of a great actor when you can emote um through a mask through a mask yeah. i've gone all american through a mask um you know which is um quite quite amazing um i know what i know what you mean but it does give that i suppose it's like um uh clint eastwood in the man yeah. with no name you know no name, um, yeah he doesn't have a mask to take off but he's very guarded about his you know origins and his personal life so you know that you can sort of equate it to that and really the mandalorian is it is a western, western. um yeah. if we go if we certainly go to um episode one of season two oh my it's unashamedly 
a oh, western. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, like, that a little bit of Jaws too at the oh, end. Oh, there was Jaws. Like, oh, there oh, Jaws. Yeah, yeah. All right, was, we're getting ahead of we're know, getting ahead I, of ourselves here. Let's I'm talk better, about we should one. we should just run down again the cast. We had um the wonderful Carl Weathers. Oh, Carl um, Weathers, Apollo Creed, as, he was a yeah. predator. He was in Force 10 from Navarone. He was Action Jackson. Yes. He's the man. I mean, he's one of my favorite actors. I mean, in the Rocky series, his Apollo Creed was just as good as Sylvester Stallone's Rocky Balboa, charisma. Yeah. He, he He's just a dynamic actor, and he's got to be in his late 70s by now, but he still has it. I mean, he he's action-oriented. He's doing a lot of his own stunts on the show, too, but... He's just something about him. As soon as you see him on screen, you fall in love with the guy. Yeah, he's, go, he's oh, awesome. that's him. I love that guy. You know? And he's got a great arc. You know, he starts off, yeah. um, you know, oh, no, he's not going to be a baddie. He ends up, you know, yeah. you think he's going to get killed. Um, and he ends up being um, an ally. And I think he's a well, fantastic, you know, He's kind of along the lines of our Han Solo or Orlando Calrissian. It's like the, the the pirate with a heart of gold type of thing. Yeah, you know? which is great. So he's playing Grief Karga. Um. There's the client, Werner Herzog, the director. Yeah, the director. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. And he's been, um, I remember seeing Is this him. his first acting role? No, no, he's been in a few things. He was in the, he was the villain in the first Jack Reacher movie with Tom okay. Cruise, yeah, yeah, where yeah. he's pretty much playing the same sort of character, but it's his, his, his accent, his delivery is just mm-hmm. something, um, and he just fits within the world. And the whole thing is, um, like you, it looks and feels like star wars oh my you know, god you yeah. can have close my eyes that's star wars yeah you you know you sort of think oh i need han solo or i need luke skywalker but you you yeah. don't you, you if need- you capture the look of it and maybe that's why i had some trouble with the prequels because it looks so bright and shiny yeah it always used to get me i'm like hey man if you're doing a story about world war ii it should look nicer than things in the vietnam war you know what i mean like the the hardware and all that should look a little aged and- yeah and older but sometimes that took me out of the clone or the clone wars uh the prequels is because coruscant was so nice looking yes Naboo, so nice looking everything was so polished and it almost went against everything george lucas set up in the first star wars trilogy because it was that worn universe it yep. was that battered chipped you know people you, like you know they use their car every day they don't sit there and have it waxed and shiny and stuff because it's like you know Gold. Well, maybe this was like the you know the renaissance to uh you know mm-hmm. that's that's how it was but that's um true. you also had um gina carano as cara oh, yeah. Dune, fantastic. Um, who's fantastic yeah. this um kick-ass um ex-rebel commando mm-hmm. um who and again had, is uh, taiki um, watiki as the uh, voice of ig88 and then um nick nolte is not playing the alien on the show but he's the voice of of quill well, yeah, because that got me at first. It said Nick Nolte. I go, there's no way that's Nick Nolte because he's a bigger guy. And I'm like, he's not in that suit. So you find out later on that he's just the voice of it. But of but, course, yeah. we all know who the breakout star is. It's Baby Yoda. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know about what is this Baby Yoda you speak of? Ed? I know. I, sorry, it's the, I don't I, know I, anything about this this creature. No, I don't. I don't know either. I can't. Could um, it be no. this guy? No. Could it be this guy? Could it be this guy? No, I think it's going to be, it's got to be be this guy. Oh my goodness gracious. The world has gone baby Yoda nuts. And one of the things. Maybe it's this guy. (laughs) Here's the problem. Or this guy. Or this guy. The problem well, is well, John Favreau, guy. or that, yeah, get your binoculars out. Yeah. John Favreau wanted to keep it such a secret, and it's hard to do nowadays with the internet and, you know, instantaneous communication. But that SOB did it. He kept it under wraps so much so that the merchandise people were kind of ticked about it because they lost a fortune last Christmas without having baby Yoda toys under the Christmas tree. But it was the biggest surprise ever when that show showed the little, uh, I don't know what do you want to call it. The little bassinet opened up. Yes. And yes. there was a little tiny a little, Yoda yeah. guy that walked out. I'm like, oh, it's Yoda. Well, it can't be. And of course, what do we all call it? Baby Yoda. Yes. And Which it's not. It's and not. You know, John Favreau says it's not Baby Yoda. It's the it's child. The child. And then there's another word, not youngling for it. Foundling. Foundling. Yeah. Dude, it's Baby Yoda. Come on. 
So we should. I mean, we're a bit all over the uh, all over the uh, cantina at the moment. But no, we no, no, say, no, no. But, but we, I was just going to say that. Remember, the Mandalorian is set five years after Return of the Jedi. So yes, um, Luke, Han, Leia, they're all Lando, out, they're all around. Um, but um, uh, Yoda sadly is not. And of course, what happens is that um, the Mandalorian or um, Din Djarin, we find out is his, is his name, is tasked with um, finding uh, his fa- Yoda's. Well, uh, let's go into some theory. Let's go into some theories about this. Okay. Originally, he was set to deliver. Yes. The child or the package or whatever you want to call him. Yeah, to, because to Werner Herzog because Werner they wanted Herzog. to extract something from him. Aha! Uh-huh. Now, now we can get into it. You can flash the spoiler alert. Midi chlorians. Midi chlorians. Yes. Yes, because one of the things that drove us all crazy about the prequels was the midi chlorians. Like, why are there midi chlorians? What are we doing here with that? Everybody, the force it doesn't work that way. Now we've got the rise of Skywalker that just came out, and we have again, spoiler alert, the Emperor's back. Yeah. How yep. could the Emperor be back? He got blown up in the end of the Death Star 2, and he was thrown down that shaft, and he should be a mess. What could possibly bring this guy back to life? Well. If there's a being like Baby Yoda, it's pretty much got mini chlorians running every time he sneezes out out his nose or whatever. If you could extract the blood or whatever's in that little guy and shoot it up into a decrepit old man, it's like the Force Viagra. It's going to make him go right up. So that's what I think they want Baby Yoda. And it all made sense to me because... The Mandalorian ended just when Rise of Skywalker came out. And when I went to the movie, I, it just clicked. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's why the Emperor was looking for Baby Yoda because, or, or, the, or the First Order, whoever's running the scenes back there. They need to extract his many chlorians from him to put inside the Emperor and it all ties. That's my theory. What do you think? Well, no, that, that could be it. I mean, we've got to remember that the Empire has um, crumbled so um, Moff Gideon really is in charge of the remnants of, at least in this area, the Empire. And it's not the Empire that we know. They're, they're all dirty and haphazard. They're, and, they're warlords and they're, they're yeah. dispersed and all that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's still, um, you know, like, uh, like those uh, Nazis in Brazil, you know, are still flying the flag and trying to... Um, keep the empire going, which obviously from the films, you realize that has been happening in the background. So, um, and he's determined to get um, the child and that's what's happening in season two. Um, It'll be interesting. I don't, I don't really know exactly because we only see Moff um, Gideon um, played by Giancarlo um, Esposito. He's a fantastic villain. Um, Mm -hmm. Again, I love those calm villains. You know, he seems like he's got, He's not a, he doesn't seem to be a one note villain, which is really good. Um, but we don't know, really know again, who he's working for essentially, or um, wouldn't it be nice to see a um, Grand Admiral Thrawn somewhere out there? Or something well, like technically, if we're going to incorporate the animated series into the Mandalorian backstory, that does happen because General Thrawn, who's a blue skin, if people don't know what we're talking about, was a character created in Heir to the Empire, the novelizations or the novels. And it's a blue skin tactician for the Empire. He wears a white uniform. Yes. He's got this, I don't know if they've incorporated too, but the yes. Is, is, is that yes, what it is? They're, yep. they're forced, they're forced canceling creatures like if you have the force and you go near him nothing you can't use the force on him because he wears this creature around his neck uh that generates a i don't know a feel that prevents the force from happening so they use that character in the animated show they used him in the clone war show he pops up in rebels too so i'm assuming that character's out there in the mandalorian universe right I think I mean, so. they've got the Black yeah. Saber. They've got other characters from the Mandalorian. Yeah, well, they're, the, you know, the so show. at this stage for season two, it looks like they're bringing back, um, well, they're not bringing back because she hasn't been there before, but they're, they're, we're going to see Ahsoka Tano. 
um, oh, yeah. from the Clone Wars that they is rumored. Was I heard was. Katie Sockoff is playing the live action version yeah, of Bo- Obi Wan's girlfriend of Bo Katan. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so she's going to be there. Um, we've just a oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> But Tamura Morrison is um that was huge. He's, and he's not back, he's not back really because he hasn't played Boba Fett before, really. No, he's I mean not. he has vocally, I mean, you know, in voiceovers, right. but um, so he's back and I suppose um overall, let's just say in a nutshell, the Mandalorian season one is a cracker of a of a series. Um, you don't need a lot, you don't you can just watch it. And yeah. really enjoy it as Star Wars. You can watch it as a Western. You can watch it as an action series. Um, it's a it's a fantastic um, eight episode season. Um, so there's that season two episode one just dropped today or last night in my case. Um, yep. We watched it. We watched um actually season the end of episode eight, and then we watched. Uh, I did the same thing last ep- night too. Yep. I, episode I, one though they. I see they yeah. call it now episode nine. I um, saw that today. It confused me when I turned it on. I go, what's this episode nine? Where's season two, episode one? And yes. no, it's episode nine. So I, I, it threw me for a loop at first. Too. I was like, wait, yeah. I missed something. And we uh, find out that we see that, uh, um, I see, I called him Boba Fett, but um, uh, the Mandalorian is uh, searching. He's basically looking for his people that can maybe help him find where the child's um, yes. family is in somewhere in the universe. So it leads him to, uh, oh yes, I saw those vintage oh, videos. That that really good. Um, but um, yeah, so that leads him to um, a planet where we get to see a fantastic uh, character who looks mm-hmm. a little bit like, um, is it Mayo um, from the Star Wars Cantina? The one-eyed, one-eyed um, creature. One-eyed that was in the background. Yeah, the Cycloptic. Yep, yeah. but he's um he's also from um the Star Wars Holiday Special, played by John Leguizamo. Yeah, well, not Which in the Star Wars Holiday Special, but in this. No, 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 no. But the thing of it is, on the, the show tonight, I'm amazed that it is a Disney Plus show because when you think Disney, you think oh, golly G rated G, wholesome family fun. There are some elements when the Mandalorian goes to the Gamorrean. Uh, wrestling match if you want to call it that and i didn't know those guys could be so svelte and in shape i always thought they were this big blobby ernest borgnine looking guys they they let themselves go in jabba's palace you know let me tell you that but they were he was at the fights and they go there and uh it it did throw me for a loop to see them with thin legs (laughs) when they were like moving around i go they didn't i thought they had big thighs or whatever yeah i know they did look the, their faces look the good, legs. but they did look yes. a little scrawny in the legs. It like yeah. a big belly, a big furry butt thing, and then suddenly you got these little toothpick legs. That's the only thing that threw me for a loop. But we digress and we we nitpick. But the thing of it is, when he shows up there, there is a fight scene where he pulls a blade out and he throws it and he stabs somebody. And I'm like, wow, Disney. Yeah, I guess they're letting it go because it was a little violent for what I assume is a kids show because. Overall, if you watch The Mandalorian, pretty much is rated PG, like Star yeah, Wars yeah. violence. It's yeah. never decapitations or disembowel. Well, or, well, well, there is, but you don't see, you don't really see it's it. It's off yeah. screen. Yeah, it's like when the doors close on uh, the character, the Devo- yes. the Devorian, Devorian, Devoronian, the looking guy that was the Brown. Yeah, the doors closed on him in the episode where they're doing the jailbreak. That Didn't he survive the, the Deveronian? I thought he survived. No, no, what sure he did, I... the, door was, the door was closing down on him and he stopped that one, but then another door closed in his face. I assume he was squished like because a bug. I'm, unless... Well, because I'm because sure I read. Sound. All I'm saying is I dread that Clancy Brown was asked whether his character would be back and he said he might make another oh, appearance. I thought he was killed. I, I got to go back and watch it. I could have swore when he was stopping the door when the other one came in his face. You could be he... right. You could be right. But... um. But yeah, it is a little bit. Um, well, you know, it's it's true to the. It's all in context, I think, which is yeah, yeah. which is yeah. well, really which good. is weird that he goes to Tatooine in tonight's episode. But he had just been in Tatooine before, and that didn't come up. That oh, by the way, there's another Mandalorian looking guy on the other side of town. I'm like, you would have thought that would have come up. But well, no. and the other thing that gets me about the show that no one wants to address is the Mandalorian is the name of the group. 
Yes. Okay. It's like Worf was the Klingon on Star Trek. Okay. Mr. Spock was the Vulcan. They don't call him Mr. Vulcan or Mr. Klingon, but the Mandalorian who does have a proper name, which they gave out, yeah. is just referred to as the Mandalorian because it's odd. It's like, well, that's like saying, well, that's not Luke Skywalker. That's the human guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why do they just refer to him as his? Well, because his, remember, only um, only Moff Gideon and Grief and Kara now know, you know his, his real, real name. name. So yeah. it's like the man with no name, you know? That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I but, think that's it. You know what bothers me more is why do they keep calling him Mando when it's right. actually so, Manda? Oh, it should be Manda. What, it's the it's the masculine of the name, not Manda, which would be the feminine if we were doing Italian. And you know what I've really got to do? I've got to do um a fan song either based on Mandy by um Barry Manilow or yeah. Amanda by Boston. I reckon I, I could do a really good uh was it our good friend uh Glenn Nelson that did Mandalorian Rain, or was that somebody else? Remember oh, there was a I, off of that song years ago? It could be. Maybe I we could. need a we need a Bruce Hornsby song. That's exactly. that's just the way it is. It's just perfect. It it's perfect. <laughs> no, anyway. It is, we, we're getting the line wrong. It's not that's the way it is. That I sounds know, like, but that, that's like an the, Italian. Hey, that's the way it is. What are you Hey, it's a Mandalorian. Oh, you know, Mandalorian, forget about it. Anyway, so um, see, so this season two, it was great. Oh, yeah. This is the way. That's the phrase. Yes. Not, that's the way it is. <laughs> it's this is the way. But this, that's how parody works. You know, you. I understand it. that, but you know, for people that are going, don't these guys watch the show? Yes, we watch it so much. We're doing a thing about it right now. But anyway, so I'm um, seeing it was this was um, you know, obviously such a western, and it was nice to see them going to um. You know, not Moss Esper, not Moss Isley, but to a, a new place. Vegas. Yeah. So um, Vegas or somewhere else. That's where uh, you know, there's stand up and there's, you know, try the veal. Hey. That's right. And I knew, I, I was saying to Kelly, as soon as I saw that thing, I go, it's a crate dragon. I bet it's oh, a yeah. crate dragon. <laughs> and that was fantastic that they uh, had that. You got to see the... Um, it was, it was part, you said it reminded you of Jaws. Yes, the it ended. also reminded me of um, Moby Dick. Moby Dick, and I'm sorry that Dune thought of sandworms before George Lucas did, but I'll tell you who does it better. Star Wars does it better. Because the if, if COVID didn't happen, we were supposed to have the Dune movie yep. right about now. And of course, the Dune movie has the giant sandworms in it. I don't care how good it looks. Nothing beats this giant crate dragon that could somehow go through mountains and pop out the other side. I'm like, don't even start thinking of the logic. Yeah. I'm like, are those porous mountains? How does he he go through the rock and all no, that? It's like Buckaroo Bonsai. He's going through the eighth dimension. He must be. He goes right through the wall. And then the size. He's got an scale. overthruster. Stop. What's that watermelon doing here? All <laughs> I know is. At one point, there's a bantha, and he eats the bantha whole, but he's going down that street. I thought I was watching Tremors for a minute. I'm like, what's yeah. happening? Or Jurassic, or Jurassic Park with the goat. I thought there was lots of little, goat, little yeah, nods. Little nods to the show. And there was, like you mentioned earlier, some little tip of the hats to episode one. We saw a bit of a pod racer. It looked like Anakin's, but Anakin's was yellow, not brown. I was thinking Sebulba's. I, but... thought, I, I thought it was Anakin's um, pod racer engine as well. It did look yeah. like... He could have painted it, which I thought was hey, kind of. If the marshal turned out to be Kitster, I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I was thinking that somewhere in the background, it's like, where do you get these cool things? You're a uh, Mandalorian. You're so wizard. I was just waiting for that line and it didn't happen. The, the, we, um, the weak, weak way. Um, Weekway's name was Weekway. I thought that was the name of the race of people. Maybe we it, don't have any names. No, but it's funny because I always used to call him Weekway. And then yeah. uh, people kept going, no, it's weak, it's weaky it's because you say key Q U yeah. A Y. And then it goes, Q-Y? hey, weak way. No, hey. that's short round. All I know is he was in it, and he the thing that threw me for that was the voice. Why didn't they dub him? Because he was like, Hey, how's it going? I'm like, what are you doing? That's not how the weak way talks. He should have like a have, hang back. on. Have you ever heard a weak way talk? Yeah, haven't. Maybe, maybe you haven't. 
I well, he doesn't sound like that. I'll tell you that. That threw me for a loop. Anyway. All right. So Timothy started, Timothy Timothy Oliphant was of Cub oh, Van. Timothy Oliphant, I like him. He's a sexy man. I like that. He's got the gray hair. I, I know like, he looked. Kelly yeah. Kelly was going. He he does look a little bit too. I said, oh look, he took off the helmet. He and his hair's perfect. I know. I was like, look at that. He's got not a hair out of place. The thing that got me is he was too tall and lanky for that Boba Fett armor. It didn't fit right. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, one size fits all what's going on there I, it was i did that's how i knew it wasn't uh boba fett yeah. but i did like how they um basically you know you're going oh he's got to go find boba fett oh fantastic oh the sarlacc and i did like how they played with well you know, our expectations that's my theory because my son said well how did boba fett get away from it? i said did you see where they said the crate dragon ate a sarlacc he goes how could he do i said maybe he ate the sarlacc that ate boba and pooped him out we don't know. Things happen. That that bat. What's the name of the steel again? Beskar. Beskar. Maybe it's like uh, uh, undigestible. Well, okay. I think Which that's I the case. Know Boba, I didn't know Boba Fett had the same type of steel, by the way. But maybe it was because Django's uh, uh, armor would deflect blaster fire. Yes, it too. would. So, yeah, and we so. saw we saw um, the Mandalorian obviously go into. Uh, into uh the uh crate dragon and survive yeah, and, he did, and that's the thing too was it spitting out some type of yellow acid breath it thing was, too? yes i'm like what is this aliens now too because they were all running the tuscan raiders and i was like Bleh! and it just threw up on them and they just i'm like what is there no end to this show today this is amazing you know it, it was it was a pretty good episode all, like all i was waiting was for Timothy Oliphant to just sit there with that long range rifle, rifle and say, smile, you son of a boom and watch him blow up. Then I would have been we're done. Basically it was jaws at the end. It was, it was yeah, jaws it was in great. every Western that you've possibly seen. And I like but how I, they, the Tuscan Raiders are so down to earth or down to Tatooine. They were even repurposing the meat from the, uh, Yes, the Greek dragon. They were taking burgers home, and even the Mandalorian took a little. That was a nice chunk of steak. I saw he had. Baby Yoda was kind of like, oh, but you know, he's a vegetarian. He's not going to yep. eat that. I agree. But now, was- did I see it, or did I just imagine it? But you know, when the Tuscans were celebrating, yeah, did they Ooh. actually did they actually reverse the footage a bit, so it went. Yeah, they did. It jumped because I thought something happened to my TV because I go, did it just skip? And I'm like, I'm- I think it is just that. Yeah. I feel like they could have. You know what? I'm if John Favreau comes to my house, I'm gonna marry that man <laughs> because I was like, you. Suck. Not only did he did the Marvel movies, he did Star Wars. He's the patron saint of geeks. He is. I mean, you can get your Kathleen Kennedy, and you can get your uh, what was that demonic man that made the Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson. If it wasn't for John Favreau, he's the Jesus Christ of our world. He's dying for their sins. He is saving Star Wars fandom from becoming Star Trek. That's another story. Okay. It is. I'm so excited about it. Dude, I watched it twice. I watched it once, and then I said, I got nothing to do. It's 4 a.m. I'm watching it again. So I hit replay, and I watched it again, make sure I got all the details. I loved how the rangefinder worked. He just, yes. It is kind of an awkward weapon, though. You got to bend over to, yeah. like... <laughs> Actually, well, hang on, hang on a second. If 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 you're look, if this yes, right, yeah, go ahead. If if it locks onto a target, why does it? Shouldn't it kind of go over? Yeah, lob it. You don't have to aim it. I thought that was kind of awkward. I'm like, why is he like bending down and like the what the hell? Maybe he had gas or something. I don't know. I don't, it knows. looked a little awkward. No, but then Django did it too in the yeah. uh, Attack of the Clones. He kind of bent over. Maybe you don't want it hit you in the head. But it's uh, going, I don't know. He's got a helmet on. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway, it was a great episode, no matter what you want to do. Now let's talk about something we really want to talk about. We can't be the Mandalorian. And Lord knows we try with our baby Yoda, but yep. there are some things we can do. You can buy the merchandise. The merchandise yep. said. Merchandise. And they just came out with some awesome stuff. They said, hey, you like this guy and this guy? Yeah. 
Well, you're going to like them as if they were back in the 70s. They just announced uh, Monday, it was at 4 o'clock Eastern time, uh, Hasbro is going to redo the uh, Mandalorian main cast as if they were 1970s, early 80s Star Wars Kenner action figures. Yep. They call it part of the retro collection. Again, why would you do that for a modern audience? You don't. You do it for guys who are 40 and 50 and 60 years old like us. They go, yep. oh, and a little tear came down my eye as I saw that vinyl cape. It looks like crap. It doesn't look good to any modern kid. But to me, I was like, oh, his arms don't move. <laughs> Neither yep. do we. Five points of articulation never look so good. And I even know. Baby Yoda. And do you reckon oh. they've they've probably sold out already, haven't they? Uh, are they up? Are, are they available at retail or do you have to just um no they'll be available at retail okay. if you can find them and then they'll yeah. probably be on ebay for a lot but i might know a guy who got two of each one <laughs> my wife might be watching the show that's all but right. one thing i don't yep. have and i don't know about you but this is crazy and yep. this yep. is the has lab yep Full so they've announced um uh oh. the razor's crest I Raises think in Australia, price. it's like about $1,000. Well, here it's like $350. And what this is, what HasLab, people might not know what that is, is they started a project a year, two years ago. They said, hey, look, we can make this big, massive replica of Jabba the Hutt's sail barge. But we can't make a lot of them because it's going to cost a lot of money to put this out. But if you, crazy fanboy out there, you want this, it's like a Kickstarter. Like if you order enough of these things and we hit a certain goal, we're going to release this thing. They did it with Jabba the Hutt sail barge. I know that because I have one in my storage unit. That my it, wife isn't it? It is your storage unit, isn't it? It is. This thing is the size of a coffee table. The sail barge was the, the ship that Jabba the Hutt had in Return of the Jedi. It comes with Jabba. It comes with the, the we used to call him um, Yak Face. Yeah. It comes with Kurt figures. It was a huge success. They did it again. You really got to be crazy to buy this thing. And, and now they've done it again. I haven't pre-ordered this one because I don't know where one would put all this stuff because yeah. storage space is a problem, but it is phenomenal. They got the detail. They got all the gadgets and the guns and all that. And it comes with exclusive figures there. So if you're a Star yeah. Wars fan, this is it. And I got to ask, is it to the scale to the little three and three quarter guys, or is it, now that's it. I, um, I actually I don't know, but it's it is pretty huge. It's got to be. I don't think it's to scale to um, to these guys. No, these are just, six inch figures, and that would be massive. I mean, that would be the size of a small bed. There they are. The um, the black series figures are really quite good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've got um, there's Kara. Yeah, yeah. Which are really good. Um, the only thing I've got for the Razor's Crest is uh. Oh, there's a little, yeah, Hot Wheels came out with that. Yep. Um, and the other thing, there's, I've got a few to send to you in your Christmas package. I don't have this one because I, the, um, uh, do you have Ushis, Ushis in uh, America? Uh, we had some Ushis, but I got some uh, medicine and it cleared right up. No, uh, what's an Ushi? So um, basically there's. Uh, oh. Is that in a. Is it coming in a box of candy or something? No, or? no, no. So every oh. every, every thirty dollars like at at Woolies perfect. at Woolies or Woolworths, every um thirty dollars you'd spend, you'd get a Ushi. So um, oh, but it's random. That. It's a you know blind oh. packed. So um, I've got uh, I've got a um a few to send to you uh in your Christmas well, package. Cool. Um, but this is the only Mandalorian I could get. The hardest one of the hardest to find is Baby, Baby Yoda. Yoda. I never got Baby. Uh, the, ch the child, sorry. Um, so oh, let me put that back up. Yeah, and I'll put it there. But no, so what other, and I was down at um, Disney last January and they, again, the, because of the delay in the Baby Yoda merchandise, they were just starting to get keychains, uh, you know, phone covers, t-shirts, small stuff, but it really hit, I'm going to say probably late March and April, just when COVID came. Uh, all the Baby Yoda stuff came over from China. And all the stores were full of it. Unfortunately, a lot of people couldn't get out yes. to get this stuff. So right now, when you go to the stores, I've seen Baby Yoda nightlights, Baby Yoda lamps. It's crazy. Even breakfast cereal. 
Yep. There's there's the Mandalorian breakfast cereal, uh, which is cool. There doesn't come with any toys or anything, but the back of the box has uh, artwork that looks like a trading card. That's another thing that's coming out. Our good friend Joe Caroni mm -hmm. is doing some sketch cards for the Mandalorian Tops trading cards. I believe they come out next week or so. So that's a whole new bunch of stuff that reminds me of the old Star Wars days. Yes. So, but it, it is a phenomenon. I tell you, I mean, it is. It's a it's a wonderful series. Um, the characters are well rounded. Um, are fantastic. The toys are great. The child is adorable. We had um, you know, we had him sitting between us on the couch when we were watching uh the show. Um, it is a wonderful uh a wonderful series, and it is Star Wars. It feels like Star Wars, which is oh, absolutely. absolutely. And I can't wait for next Friday already to I was see. Just gonna say, I just you took the words out of my mouth. I can't wait for the next episode. Literally, as soon as this one ended, the first thing I thought of is. How many more days do I have to wait to see the next episode? That's right. I mean, I have not seen, if we want to do an episode review, if, was there any weak ones? I'm going to say the only one maybe in season one I thought was kind of weak is when he, and it might be the actor, it was uh, Cazell, the, the, the guy that's the, is it Bobby Cazell? Was it his son? It's uh, when- Carnivale? Carnivale, I'm sorry. Yeah, Carnivale. I think it was his son. Or was that where he was sort of like the Han Solo character? The younger bounty hunter who was trying to break into the guild and he tagged along with them and they were, they met up with Ming 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 Na Wen. Ming Na Wen. It was that episode where they were on Tatooine and they were in the Star Wars bar yep. where Han shot uh Greedo, all that stuff. That was probably the only one I thought was kind of weak. Yeah. If you had to look at all the episodes, and then maybe the one where they fought the giant walker. The, the you know, it was in the mining community oh yes there. that's right well, it's, that was kind of like ewoki type of thing you know but but, e but even so they're still um entertaining and i'd take a bad oh, yeah, episode of that bad. um yeah. any day you know i think um I, and look we haven't even spoken about the um the technology that stagecraft technology that they use with oh, the screen yes. though i must say uh during watching the season uh two first episode i was going all right, they're just standing in a room and I'm trying to That's see where I the theme is. They ruined, they ruined it because I watched the behind the scenes on the Disney yeah. Plus show where they, they it's, I can't think of what it's called, but there was an eight uh, episode documentary where they show the making of it. Is it the and Disney you, Gallery, I think, or something? Gallery, like that. yeah. And when you find out that it's all one giant big digital projection screen, yeah. really, it's like a massive wall that's a 360 degree theater type of thing. And that's where they filmed the show. So they never leave a building. They never go on location. There's not a lot of sets. It's really in a room that's just well lit and projected yep. onto it. I thought the same thing too, when they were going along a bit, I said, they're, they're just in a big warehouse somewhere, aren't they? But that's kind of what George Lucas started with the prequels with the green screen technology. So they've just kind of, you know, tinkered with it and perfected it and made it look like it's outdoors and such, but yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, don't knock it. It's, it's Hey, I've seen shows that are filmed outside that aren't as good as that. Well, so. that's right. And I, I did read that um, the Batman is using that technology as well. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, I think it's it might be it's, the way of the future. A lot of the stuff because of what's happening in the world right now, people can't go on location a lot of times yeah. and you want to bring the location that. to you. I think I was getting an Indiana Jones vibe on some of this today when they were jumping around. And did you notice how uh, the Mandalorian hits the backpack? of Boba Fett. Oh, like, 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 like half, yeah, I thought that was nice too. I yeah, forgot yeah. about that. Yep. And then when he fought Moff Gideon and he was on the outside of his TIE fighter, it reminded me of Indiana Jones when he was dragging underneath the truck. Yes. In Raiders of the Lost Ark because he had his cable shoot onto it and he's pulling himself back along the wing and then he yes. puts his little grenade there and he blows up the guy's wing. So there's a lot. When I watch this, I speaking of Indiana Jones, and we all know that you and I are huge Indiana Jones fans. Mm -hmm. This is the type of show that I wish that they did a weekly Indiana Jones series and just said this is an adventure set in the early 40s or the 30s, and you know, the untold yep. adventures of Indiana Jones. And that's all. This is a random, you know, things you never heard about or something like that. I mean. We live in hope. We live in hope that that will happen. I would go for that any other day. I mean, I don't know when a movie might ever come out or if it ever will, but hey, if they could do it as well as The Mandalorian, I'd watch that. Oh my gosh. It would be absolutely phenomenal.
Yeah, um, and there's a Mandalorian comic book. I wanted to end the, the show yep. before we talk about merchandise. They are doing everything that they did in the original Star Wars stuff and includes a comic book, which I heard is going to come out uh, February from okay. Marvel Comics. So there'll be a Mandalorian comic book, which is, I think they have everything now that the original Star Wars came out with. Yeah. All they need now is uh, the little snap together uh, vans that they came out with back in the day and a couple other little toys here and there. And well, a Mandalorian. They've got, they've got the remote control by um, child figure, I see that. Um, that you uh, like the remote control R two D two, so they've got yeah. um, yeah. There's pretty much they just need underoos, and then you'll. I was be, gonna um, say all they need is some underoos and maybe a couple Slurpee cups or something like that, because I think they've covered everything that we had growing up as kids. Uh, did they do a twelve inch figure yet? Um, no. I, I, they've Not got the a, hot toy stuff. That's way too expensive. I don't think so, but it would be a uh, no brainer. I'm sure they probably would do. You know, like the again the really basic. They bring out the um, you know, they're like about ten or twelve dollars. The uh, large figures, maybe they will. Yeah, yeah, maybe they it would will. make but other sense. Than that, the model kits. They don't make model kits anymore, but no, you know, a snap together model kit of uh, the Razor's Crest would be nice. But no, it's we're exhausted talking about the show. I don't know about you, but I'm like, oof. I know, I know, you know, and I, I, I'm not sure, you know, if we told you all you need to know about the Mandalorian, but hopefully um, you're probably already watching it already, but hopefully you found some interesting facts or tidbits, or you might want to revisit some of the episodes or look at that merchandise. Um, the serial is um, interesting. We don't get that in Australia, but you might. You know, if we get to 200 subscribers, we're at about 160 something subscribers at the moment at 200 subscribers, Mitch is going to eat. I don't think he's got it handy. Do you? No, it's, it's not here, but it's in the, it's in the house. It's in a vault. It's in a vault. The, um, the Batman cereal from 1989, which we'd love to see Mitch eat since I had to eat my 2008 at a hundred subscribers. Mitch has to uh, suffer as well, which would be good. Um, and again, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the show and please leave a comment. And again, if you've got any topics that you want to um, uh, us to cover, let us know. I'm next. I've got a feeling next episode might be the anniversary of the Star Wars holiday special. Say no, Ed. Say no. So we we've might have to do that. We're in 2020. We've suffered enough. <laughs> I might have to hurt myself. Oh, please don't. Anyway, so thanks again for watching. This is Ed Dollister. This is Mitch Halleck. And we'll see you next episode on Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.